Let's open your Bibles to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 10. 2 Kings, chapter 10. If you're using a Schofield reference Bible, it's page 434. And beginning with the 15th verse, we'll read just four verses, verses 15 through 18. We'll read the verses responsibly. The 15th verse is the text verse for this morning's message. Shall we stand, please, for the reading of God's Word? And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him, and he saluted him and said to him, Is thine heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. And he said, Come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria, till he had destroyed him, according to the saying of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. And Jehu gave all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. And let's pray. Father, this is a good day, a good day for gathering with thy people, a good day for the preaching of the Word of God, a good day for the First Baptist Church of Hammond, and certainly this day will just be one of many other days where we've come together, where we've heard thy Word, and where thy servant has obeyed thee in the preaching of thy Word, and we, thy people, must likewise obey thee in the doing of thy Word. Help us today and meet with us in power in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to speak this morning on the subject, get out of the vestibule. Get out of the vestibule. And I say before I speak, it is now 11.38 according to the clock up there. Every time we have the Lord's Supper, I get started about 13 to 15 minutes later. I always make you this promise and I always keep it. I will finish preaching this morning by 12.10. I will not be speaking at 12.11. The invitation will have started by 12.11. We'll be out of here by 12.30, as is always the case. We're always out before 12.30. Maybe once a year we have a huge day of some kind, but, but our regular custom is to get out by 12.30. I may beat that a little bit. I promise you by 12.10. So you won't have to. It's about 5 after 12, and I'm still on the introduction. I'll just cancel the sermon and we'll close. But I want you to know that if I'm circling the field at 11, at 12.09, I'll just crash the plane. And uh, so I, um, I want to speak this morning on, I think, one of the most important subjects. Our Heavenly Father, bless me as I speak and my precious people as they hear today. The glory of God. Amen. I'm going to read for you just one verse read a while ago and emphasize one little line. When he was departed thence, he delighted on Jehonadad, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him, and he saluted him. And he said unto him, and here's my, here's my text, Is thy heart right? Is thy heart. Notice he didn't say, Is your life right? Is your heart right? Didn't say, Is your mind clean? said, is your heart right? Well, most of us don't know what that question means. I want to speak this morning on that question. My message comes from a question asked me by a preacher. He said to me, Brother Hiles, I wish I could feel as deeply as you feel. Anybody that knows me very well knows that I feel very deeply. I'm a very emotional person, really. I'm a very affectionate person. I love deeply. And this pastor said to me, I wish I could feel as deeply as you feel. And then he said, how? You know, he said, how could I do it? He said, I, I'm just not an emotional person. I want to say this this morning and then I'll preach. There are no unemotional people. Secondly, there are no cold people. Thirdly, there are no unaffectionate 
people. I want to explain to you what I mean. Please sit up straight and please listen to everything and do not take any notes. Please listen to everything I say. Notice it says, Is thy heart right? I think I'll use this mic this morning. Is thy, thy heart right? Now, when we read that, we usually so uh, think that the word heart there is a synonym for the word life. He's not saying, is your life right? He's not asking, is your mind right? He's saying, is your heart right? Now, the heart in the Bible is the seat of emotions. It's where you shout. It's where, where you hurt. It's where you rejoice. It is the seat of emotions. It is not where you learn. It's where you rejoice about what you know or what you've learned. It is, the, it is the seat or the throne of emotions. So actually what he's asking here, if you'll listen carefully as I lay the foundation, I think you'll listen after a while. He's asking here, are your feelings right with God? That's what he's asking. He's not asking, are your habits right with God? He's not asking, is your walk right with God? He's saying, are your feelings right with God? Or, are your emotions right with God? Let me give you a verse. Jeremiah 4.18, because it reacheth unto thine heart. Let me give you another verse. Proverbs 23.7, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Listen carefully, I'll teach you something. That word in, you don't think in your heart. You think in your head. You don't think in your heart. So he's not saying, as a man thinketh with his heart. The word there is a little preposition that also means into. Hear me now. As a man thinketh into his heart. That's what it's saying. It's saying that uh, uh, the, the, the mind, I'm going to make four statements, the mind is the vestibule of the heart. Here is the mind up here. Here's the heart down here. Here's where I think. Here's where I rejoice or mourn or hurt. And so as a man in his mind thinketh, he thinketh into his heart. That means that, that if you think long enough about something, it will get down to your emotions. So the person that's not affectionate just doesn't think long enough about a subject or about a person. Um, the, first I said the mind is the vestibule of the heart. Now most of us stay in the vestibule. We never enter into, are you listening to me? We never in, to enter into the sanctuary, which is the heart. The mind is the vestibule. The heart is the sanctuary. Most of us think but we do not think long enough for to think it into the heart. As he thinketh into his heart. As he thinketh it down into his heart. For example, uh, I know I'm saved. No doubt about that. If I died today, I'd go to heaven. My sins are forgiven. I'm a child of God. That's in my mind. Now I get to thinking about that. My name is written up there on a book. I'm going to walk down golden streets in a matter of a few years. I'm going to see my mama and Dr. Rice and Brother Olaf and my Savior. Matter of three years. What am I doing? I'm thinking into my heart. I'm taking what I know and thinking it down into my heart. The affectionate person is the same as the unaffectionate person. He just thinks long enough till it goes from his mind down to his heart. As a man thinketh into his heart, so is he. I said number one, the mind is the vestibule of the heart. Number two, most of us stay in the vestibule and seldom enter into the sanctuary. We never, three, we never get our thoughts down to the heart. Let me, let me illustrate. Follow me carefully. Here's a baseball player. His first time up in the game, he gets a hit. Well, that's good. That's nice. He gets a hit. Second time up, he gets a hit. Hey, having a good day. I, I'm going to be, I'm about at least 400 today. If you get five times up, I, I get at least two hits. That's 400 batting average. That's tremendous. Third time up, he gets a hit. Wow, I'm having a great day. Fourth time up, he gets a hit. Well, woo-wee, I'm on a roll. Fifth time up, he gets a hit. Boy, he jumps up and down going to first base and hollers and raises his hand like that. You see, your problem is you never get that far. But uh, let's take a salesman. A salesman makes one sale. He says, boy, that's good. The next place he goes to makes another sale. Wow, two in a row. Wake up. Hey, wake up. 
Next place he goes to, he makes a sale. Whoopee! Three in a row. Man, I'm going to get rich today. I'll retire by dark. And uh, fourth place he goes to, makes a sale. Wow! Four in a row! And the fifth place he goes to, makes a sale. Woo! Five. Wow! The only reason, the only difference in one sale to the other is one thinks into his heart. And that's why you never get happy. You never think into your heart. You sit there and think for five minutes about the fact that your name is written in heaven and you become one of these folks you criticize. As a man thinketh into his heart, so is he. Because it reacheth into, it reacheth into thy heart. With the man, with the mind, man thinks, and then he keeps on thinking and keeps on thinking, and the mind sends a message down to his heart and says, guess what's going on up here? And the heart says, wow, something big is going on up there, as a man thinketh into his heart. Now, your problem is, you don't think enough about the good things. You don't think enough about the Word of God. You don't think enough about the things of God. You don't think enough about heaven. You don't think enough about prayer. You don't think enough about... Hey, for example, I hold in my hand a Bible. That's pretty good. That's in my head. The Bible's the Word of God. That's still in my head. This book always existed. Never was a time when it didn't exist. Uh, this is God's book. Hey, every word in this book, God wrote just like He wrote the Ten Commandments on the tablets of stone for Moses. Hey, this book will live forever. You know, one of these days I'm going to sit and let Jesus teach me this book. You know, one of these days for eternity I'm going to learn. Oh, praise the Lord. It done got to my heart. But your problem is it never gets to your heart because you never sit there and you're too busy thinking about things and buying and selling and eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. And you never think about the things of God. I'm saying the only difference between unemotional Christians and emotional Christians is the unemotional Christians think, but they don't think it down into the heart. For example, all of us know John 3.16 in the mind. For God so the world that gave His only begotten Son, who shall believe in Him shall not perish, but have a blessing life. It's good. For God so loved the world. I wonder how much He loved the world. He so loved the world. So describes the infinite. There's no, no, no words in the English language to tell us how much God loves the world. Wow! God loves the world more than all the other loves put together. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth on Him, hey, that's me! That's me. I don't have to go to hell. I can go to heaven. I can be saved. And only by believing on Him. I don't have to live a good life. I don't have to get baptized to be saved. I don't have to join somebody. Hey, but shall, shall not perish. Well, glory to God, not one finger will ever burn in hell. My hell will not be singed. I'll not spend one minute in hell, but have everlasting life. Glory to God, I'll live forever in the gates, behind the gates of pearl. I'm on my way to heaven. What have I done? I have thought my way into my heart. All of us know John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house and many mansions. Not so I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you be also. We all know that in the mind. But if you, you can think that in your heart like this. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Okay, I do that. Believe also in me. I do that. In my Father's house are many mansions. Big deal. So what? I go and prepare a place for you. Oh, 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 oh. For me? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you, mister. I'm going to come back and get you. One of the matches being prepared for you. Me! Well, glory to God. He's going to come back someday. And the grave shall open. And the trumpet shall sound. And the voice of the archangel shall pierce the skies. And the living shall be caught up with the Lord. In. Woo! Well, glory! You see, I thought it into my heart. <laughs> That's the difference. Uh, you, you unaffectionate people. You, just, you, you unaffectionate husbands or wives. You, you can think affection if you'll just think about your husband. Or think about your wife. I'm saying, think it into your heart. Now, we're commanded in the Bible to think some things into our hearts. For example, thy word have I hid 
in my head. No. Thy word have I hid in my mind. No. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. <coughs> That's uh, Psalm 119, verse 11. Psalm 22, 2. Lay up his words in thy mind. No. In thy head. No. <coughs> in thy heart. God is commanding you here to put his words in your heart. Now, <coughs> they don't go in your heart first. You see, uh, uh, some people can get happy because a certain chords hit on a on a piano or organ, or a certain <laughs> beat is sung by the choir or a quartet. I don't get happy because they sing a little faster than than, than they did yesterday. I don't get happy uh, because uh, of some some jazzy number. I get happy when my mind realizes something. And I, John, saw the holy city coming down from God out of heaven. <laughs> Preparing as a bride adorned for a husband. I think about that. Ten thousand years from right now, I'll be with Jesus. Ten million years from right now, I'll be with my mother and Dr. John and all the others. Ten zillion, trillion, whatever else it is. Years. Praise God, when we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. Woo! I just done thought it down into my heart. Where people ask me questions, right? How, how long do you read the Bible every day? My answer is this: until it gets into my heart. I refuse to stop reading that book till it gets in my heart. If my blood pressure doesn't go up, I keep on reading it. My pulse does increase, I keep on reading it. I read it till it gets from my mind. Oh, let's see. In the Greek, this means so and so, and uh, and this word would remind me over here of this word. I'm sorry, I can't quit reading the Bible yet. I'm commanded to to hide His word not in my mind but in my heart, and that means every day when I pick up this book, I read it and I read it and I read it and I read it until I think it down into my heart. When I can shout about it and praise God about it and rejoice about it, that's as long as I read the Bible. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 6, 5, I am to love the Lord thy God with all my heart. Thou shalt, a command, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Now, didn't say with all thy mind. Didn't say with all thy head. <laughs> thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. What does that mean? That means you're to love him till you get happy about it. That means I am to love him in my mind. And think about him, my great God, he made the flowers and the trees and caused the sun to rise this morning and it'll set tonight. He holds the stars in place. He keeps the rivers flowing toward the mount, toward the ocean, down the mountainside. He made the mountains and the valleys and my that great omnipotent God gave his son to save me from hell. And he said goodbye to Jesus, and Jesus left heaven and came to earth for 33 lonely, homesick years. He had no place to lay his head. His race rejected him. His, his, his synagogue rejected him. His city rejected him. His creation rejected him. And those who rejected him and who crucified him, for them and for me, he went to the cross. He died for me. He shed his blood, we, we thought about a while ago. His body was broken, as we remembered a while ago. And thank God, after three days and three nights, up from the grave he arose. The mighty triumph for his foes. He ascended back to heaven, took his blood, and sprinkled that blood on heaven's mercy seat. What have I done? I started off thinking with my head. I thought it into my heart. And it's time some of you people somewhere in church or alone thought the Word of God into your heart and the love of God into your heart. As a man thinketh into his heart, so is he. I'm commanded not only to do that, I'm commanded to pray with my heart. Psalm 119, 145. I'm commanded to pray with my heart. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray thee, Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake. Well, I love that scripture, don't you? I, 
You're not laughing. You better. I pray the Lord my soul to take. That's in the head. God is great. And by the way, this is, this is, this is the depth of most of your prayer life. God is great. God is good. Let us thank Him for the food. <laughs> now, that's in the mind. And the average person here prays, but you never pray into your heart. How long do you pray, Brother Hiles? I pray till my heart burns. How long do you pray? I pray until my prayer gets from my mind as I stop and realize, hey, I stop and realize I'm talking to the King of Kings. I have an audience not with a king, but the King of Kings, the one who sets up kings and puts down kings, the creator of all the universe. I'm talking to him, and he is listening to me. Well, glory. What have I done? I've prayed, my, I've prayed into my heart. I'm just not a Pentecostal. Shoot. Baptists were shouting 1,800 years before they have invented Pentecostals. Now, you listen to me. This church will die when it becomes a head church. America's full of churches that used to be heart churches that now are head churches. They used to be happy churches and soul winning churches and virile churches and active churches and rejoicing churches and praising churches. And then they got to become, they got themselves a Schofield Bible, and I have one too, not right here, but I have one. And they got ultra dispensational. The Bible became a mathematics book instead of a love story. And they began to study the Word and study the Word and study the Word, but never have a spell because of what they study. A professor at Moody Bible Institute years ago, also pastor of a small church in the area. He said, my church is different from yours. Our churches are different. He said, you have a church that's soul winning and emotional. I have one that's steady, a <coughs> Bible study, and quiet. I said, that isn't all. He said, what's that? I said, I have a church and you don't. The great churches of the past generation loved to the heart, read the Bible to the heart, prayed to the heart, and worked its way down to the mind of the heart, and now you got a bunch of deeper life churches diagramming the Bible like it's a mathematical, like it's an English uh, sentence, and, and figuring out the Bible like it's an uh, uh, algebra, uh, what do you call those things? Equations? <laughs> uh, science formula? But it is. Learn the Bible. But he said to me, he said, uh, he said, you're just sort of a shouter, and I'm a more of a Bible student. I said, if you're more of a Bible student, you've got more to shout about than I have. But if I've chosen to be a deeper lifer, I said, okay, then learn some truth and then have a spell, then go back to your truth. And the more you learn, the happier you ought to be. As a man thinketh into his heart, so is he. There's another thing I'm supposed to put in my heart, besides the Word of God, real love, prayer. I'm supposed to serve the Lord with my heart. Deuteronomy 10, 12, serve the Lord with all thine heart. What does that mean? It means I'm supposed to keep serving God till I'm happy about it. A few days ago, I went soul winning. I want a man of the Lord. I said, boy, it's great. The next door I went to, I want another man of the Lord. I mean, grown men want the Lord. <coughs> Next door I went to, I want another man of the Lord. And when I won that first man, I said, boy, that's good. I won that second man, I said, boy, I had two in a row. I won the third man, I said, whoopee, praise the Lord, I'm on a roll. I won, that, I won the fourth man, four straight visits, four straight grown men got saved. I walked out of there, whoo! well, glory. And the re listen, if you ever win four folks to the Lord straight in a row, you may at least say, whoopee. As a man thinketh to his heart, I'm supposed to serve till it gets in my heart. Pastor said again, I say, the pastor said, wish I could feel as deeply about my people as you feel about yours. I said, you can. Think your way out of the vestibule. <clears throat> Mind is the vestibule. Heart is the sanctuary. The average person here reads his Bible in the vestibule, prays in the vestibule, 
serves in the vestibule, loves in the vestibule, feels in the vestibule. I said, you can think your way. He said, how do you do it? I said, okay, I'll tell you how. I'm in my motel room, <coughs> a distant city from here. I sit down in my motel room, and I think about those steel mills out there. I think about you men out there working those steel mills, those blast furnaces. I think about you. I think about you a while I begin to love you and thank God for you. And thank God that the tithe that you give comes from a job working in the undesirable, deplorable conditions of the steel mill. Then I think about visit the rest homes and think about those in the rest homes and how grateful I am that I can be outside at the age of almost 70. I'm still strong enough to be outside. I can walk briskly. I can run. I can think clearly. And I think about those in rest homes. And then I keep on thinking. I visit our classrooms and think about our students and think about those teachers that work all day with those children. I visit our Howells Anderson College wives and think about their homesickness and have enough to see their husbands more. And I keep on thinking and I visit the deaf and stop my ears. I put something in my ears to stop my ears and live in a world of silence for about ten minutes and think about the deaf that live that way all the time. Then I think about the blind. I blindfold myself with a handkerchief and I, 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 or a towel or something, and I walk through the room trying to feel my way to the room. I, I walk blindfolded for about ten minutes, and I think about the blind. And then I visit the ladies deserted by their husbands for a while and think about their loneliness and their heartbreak and their sadness and how hard it is to rear those children by themselves. Then I think about the factories where I'm in work and labor, and I visit the bus kids and the ghettos. I visit Lower Wacker Drive and think about those men and women that sleep there on Lower Wacker Drive. And before I know it, bless God, I'm in love with my people. I'm praying for you and loving you and thanking God for you and praising God for your goodness and thanking God. I pass the greatest church in the whole world. And once in a while somebody comes, I don't like that loud preaching. You just haven't thought into your heart, brother. You just, you're up here. You know what an intellectual is? He's a dumb bunny. He hasn't let it get to his heart yet. Well, I'm more of the intellectual type. No, you, you haven't got enough sense to, for where to send that knowledge to. Let your head send a message to your heart and tell you what it's thinking. Your heart might like it. And you women, you'd sit there for an hour or some afternoon about 3 o'clock. Think about your husband. Think about him driving a truck all all day long. Think about the fun he's having flirting with those girls. I'm, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Think about your husband working in a factory all day long. Or think about that man who supported you all through these years and think what a decent kind of a guy he is. Boy, when he, he gets home, you'll forget you've got supper. You'll grab him and throw him on the chair and hug him and kiss him. And you won't be some frigid backslider. You'll be an emotional woman that loves your husband. Why? Because you thought it from your head down to your heart. Boy, this is good. How long do I think about our people? Till it gets in my heart. How long do I read the Bible? Till it gets into my heart. How long do I pray? Till it gets into my heart. How long do I serve? until it gets into my heart. I'll say it again. There are no unemotional people. There are no cold people. God didn't shoot a, a, a shot of adrenaline into some people and make them affectionate, and others that made them cold and frigid. He didn't do that. There are some people that have disciplined themselves to think. Well, my deacons last night lingered after the deacon's meeting. And he said, Brother Hiles, I'm glad you and Ms. Hiles are getting away for a few days. He said, you need to get away. He said, the load is heavy and hard, and I'm so glad you're getting away. Now, what caused him to do that? He kept on thinking. He kept on thinking. One of our young men came to my office the other day on Sunday stayed in line just to say this. He said, Brother Hiles, I thought about you yesterday. He said, you're a marvelous man. I said, you're right. He said, you're a marvelous man. He said, Brother Hiles, I realized yesterday morning you preached a funeral service for a lady in our church. And just almost as soon as that funeral service was over, you had to get ready for a wedding. He said, that night you had an ordination service. He said, I marvel at how you can change like that. 
can weep with someone who's lost a loved one and then in a few minutes rejoice with someone who's getting married. And after a while, we set aside some young men to preach the gospel. He said, I just was thinking, here and now, here and now, I was just thinking. What a marvel you are. Now, you think he's more emotional than the rest? He said, I was just thinking. He didn't say, I went down to Dr. Jesus. He got a hypodermic needle stuck in my arm. And the hypodermic needle said, gratitude. Nobody's more grateful than anybody else. You think yourself into gratitude. Nobody's more expressive than anybody else. You think yourself into expression. Nobody's more loving than anybody else. You think your way to love. For every single emotion of the heart starts in the mind. And the mind keeps on thinking, keeps on thinking, keeps on thinking. And the heart says, what are you thinking about? And the mind says, I've been thinking about this. And the heart says, hey, that's pretty good. And all of a sudden, that thought, what the knowledge that you've been thinking about is thought into the heart. And then there's emotion, and there's affection, and there's joy, there's excitement, there's thrill. As a man thinketh into his heart, so is he, because it reacheth into, it reacheth into thine heart. Look at me. Ladies, you can fall in love with your husband if you'll do what I preach this morning. You what I said? You can fall in love with your husband if you'll do what I preach this morning. Every man in America who'd do this could fall in love with his wife except Bill Clinton. If you'd do what I said this morning. Every once in a while the devil makes me do some things. But, but I enjoy it. Every man in this room could fall in love with your wife. Hey, did it did dawn on you what she did to give you that child? Why don't you stop and think about those labor hours? Why don't you stop and think about the suffering she endured? The only difference, you could think yourself into the love with your wife. You could think yourself into being in love with your husband. You could think yourself into loving the church that you have some doubts about sometimes. You could think yourself into being expressive. You could think, you, think you, some of you folks, the only thing you've ever said in church is, oh my. And sometimes I, I'm glad to get that expression out of you. Oh my, that's the happiest you look. You could think yourself into saying, well, glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh into his heart, so is he. Would you bow your heads, please? Our Heavenly Father, I sure would like the use of you to change a bunch of people this morning. I'd like the use of you to enable that man who's worked hard for many years to get some hugs and kisses and words of gratitude and love and affection from a wife. I'd like to think that this little sermon this morning will cause a little wife who's been loving and faithful for years to get some gratitude and words of expression of love from her husband. I'd like to think that some people who know they're saved will reach, get it down to their hearts and rejoice because of it. Our heads are bowed. No one is moving. No one is leaving.